So this application allows us to explore the result of the gambler's ruin. Um, we're going to see a lot more of this type of problem, sort of like this random walk, particle moving around when we check out the last chapter on Markov chains and in terms of stochastic processes. Uh, but for now, uh, a pretty simple setup. You can imagine two gamblers, I'll just reiterate the problem statement here, two gamblers, gambler A and gambler B, um, there's n dollars between them, so here I have like this little parameter set up, there's n dollars, there's fifty dollars, uh, gambler A has i dollars, so he has, starts with twenty-five in this case, um, they play repeated independent rounds, each round gambler A has probably p of winning, so here p is one half, so he has one half chance of winning. Um, if he wins, he gives a, he gets a dollar from player B. If he loses, he gives a dollar to player B. And you uh, you play until exhaustion, basically. You play until Gamble A has all the money, so all $50 in this case, or loses all his money. And that's kind of the ruin that's, that's alluded to. So um, for our purposes, it's less important, at least in this context, um, as you'll see in the problems we do, it's less important to really understand the solving the result of gambler's ruin, so we use a difference equation. It's a little bit beyond our mathematical purview, um, but it is important to understand like the setup of the problem, and sort of what's going on, because we can use the result of gambler's ruin to solve other similar problems. So here, uh, this app is essentially just to get you familiar with gambler's ruin, to think about the parameters and to, to be more comfortable with it. So I'm going to go ahead and go ahead and hit go, and what happens is on the right uh, we have this nice graph generated that plots the winnings are the amount of money that player A has against each round on the x-axis. So the first round, player A starts with I, doll, I is $25, and we're going to have this black horizontal line be the amount of money that player A has, and you can see it, it in sort of a random walk around. In this case, player A wins, right? So he dips down, but then he comes back, and you know, he comes up, down, and eventually wins all the $50 in the game, and the game's over, and we have this little tracker that, that tracks how many rounds we played. In this case, it's 455. And the last uh, kind of notable thing is this uh, text here that tells us the probability in general of player A winning with these parameters. So in this case, it makes sense that's one half, right? The game is totally symmetric. Player A has half the money, and he has a half, uh, one half probability of winning each round. So it makes sense that it's one half. So, you know, we can hit go and generate some more. He won again. In this case, he lost. That game took a little longer, 779. Um, you know, we should see half the time he loses, half the time he wins. Um, and now we can start to think about adjusting these parameters and see what seeing what happens. So let's change n. Let's change n to twenty. I automatically defaults to half of it. And you know, again, still since i is half of n and p is one half, we still have a half probability of winning. But you can see the game's much shorter. It only took seventy four turns as opposed to the hundred of turns it took before. Um, and now we can think about changing i. So if we decrease i, right? Let's decrease i to five. Intuitively, our probability of winning should go down, right? Because he starts with like visually, you can see there's twenty dollars in the game, and he starts with five. So he's he's probably gonna lose, and you can see there he that was actually an example he won, but most of the time we're gonna lose. Uh, there he wins, uh, but most of the time he'll lose, and it, it won't take as long. You just want a couple, etc. And obviously, if you decrease p as well, his probability of winning falls off pretty quick, and you can see here it's less than you know very very rarely he's gonna he's gonna win, and the games are pretty quick. The games take like thirteen turns, you know, five turns, etc. So. A couple things we can note here is that notice that let's bring n to be 100 because it's a little more interesting. Um, note that we don't quite hit like this is a, he has a very small probability of winning in this setup where he has half the money but a low probability of winning each round, but he doesn't quite hit zero probability of winning. Okay, so even in like the worst case scenario, like there's a hundred dollars, let's say he has one dollar and very low chance of. Uh, winning each round, he still has some probability of winning. The only time when this probability of winning hits zero, right, is when I hit zero. There we go. I hit zero, probability zero of winning, because, you know, he starts with zero dollars. Even when I is one and we have a very small probability of winning each turn, so let me go back to when I equals one, there's some positive probability, you know, it's very rare, but some times when he will come out um, and actually win this game, but very small, but not quite zero. It's only zero, like I said, when I is zero or when P is zero. When p is zero, it doesn't matter what i is, right? Because we're going to lose every round. And in, in, in fact, you can see like if i is forty, he's going to lose in exactly four turns every time. Forty turns every time, because each turn he loses. Um, so we don't see probability of zero of winning, or and, we, and likewise we don't see probability one of winning unless we get the extreme. So here we, you know, we start with ninety nine dollars, and you know, win with probably point nine. We're we're almost certainly going to win every time. Um, but uh, it's not quite one until we bring p to one or we bring i to 100. 
Okay, so that's kind of interesting to think about the edge cases. And then the last thing to think about is, like, which effect is stronger, right? So, like, there's clearly two effects. We could either increase the amount of money he starts with, or we could, you know, change the probability of him winning each turn. So let's try let's try increasing the amount of money he starts with by, by 10. Okay, so he starts with this amount. He's probably 0.6 of winning. And, you know, if we, we can draw a couple, we can see how he wins. You know, he starts with, like, a little more than half the money. And let's decrease the probability of him winning by by 0.1 so this, this is pretty extreme we just saw the probability of him winning with this parameters even though he starts with more than half right of the money his probability is slightly below one half and his probability of winning is extremely small it's less than 0.001 so you can kind of see how the probability is, is actually much stronger even if we you know bring this up to like 76 you know we still have this really low probability when we bring it up to like 95 you know, yeah, 90, uh, 97-ish, we still are probably losing, which is pretty crazy. We still only have like a 30% chance of winning, even if we start with this much money. So you can see how P is P is very strong, and we can do the opposite. We could start with, you know, not a lot of money, but if P is like 0.6, we're almost, we're, we're probably going to win, even though we don't start with a lot of money. And if we increase P even more, we, we have, yeah, a very high chance of winning. So you can see how P really drives this. If P is essentially anything... That, uh, that deviates from 0.5, uh, player A has a really strong chance of winning. So continue to play with this, you know, continue to hit go and sample and see how long the turns take. We can make like a really long game by saying I is 50, N is 100, and setting P equal to be neutral. Now we have like these games that take thousands of turns, which makes sense because we have a lot of money and equal probability each way. Um, but just getting sort of a hang of this is, is probably helpful for you to wrap your head around sort of the gambler's uh, ruin um, result and the problem.